Hello there. Today I'd like to show you some rare and interesting cassettes from my collection. And I'm going to start with this pre-recorded cassette. This is a Telefunken Highcom demonstration cassette. Telefunken developed the Highcom noise reduction system and had it on the market from 1978 until 1986. This cassette was made in around 1980. All of the cassette decks equipped with the Highcom noise reduction system were shown playing this demonstration cassette in their 1980 catalog. And as I take this out, this is quite clever. This is basically just a dirt cheap Type 1 cassette, which is really, really noisy. And this has some really quiet music recorded on it, classical music, and even an excerpt from a rehearsal where all you hear is people talking very quietly and musicians tuning their instruments. And of course, all of these very, very quiet sounds without the Highcom noise reduction system activated are absolutely drowning in the tape noise of this cheap Type 1 cassette. But with Highcom, I kid you not, there is almost no noise. So this is actually a really, really good demonstration of the Highcom noise reduction system. Next, I have another Telefunken cassette, C60 High Energy. Now, this sure doesn't look like anything special, but it is, because this was never sold regularly. This was included with the Telefunken cassette decks RC100 and RC200 that were sold from 1982 until 1984. There is no cassette case, there is no inlay for this, because this came just in some plastic shrink wrap. And this really is a dirt cheap Type 1 cassette. Really doesn't do the cassette decks any justice, unless Telefunken wanted to motivate you to use the Highcom noise reduction system, which, as you can see, the original owner of this cassette actually did. Because... Otherwisely, just like with a demonstration cassette, any music that you recorded on this would have just been drowned in the tape noise. This cassette was made in Japan, just like the RC100 and RC200 cassette decks. Next, I have something that, without a doubt, is very rare, at least over here. This is a TDK C90F. It comes in a cardboard box. And as we take a look around, you can see all of the labeling on the box is in Japanese. And on this side, we have the original selling price, 800 yen. Online, I can only find Japanese references to this cassette that indicate that this was made in 1969. And that all leads me to believe that this cassette was actually bought in Japan and somehow made its way all the way here to Germany. Let's take a look at the cassette itself. There it is. The A side is in red and the B side is in blue. And in case you wonder, no, the Woodstock recordings have been erased. There is nothing on this cassette anymore. Next, we have another cassette in a cardboard case. This is a Sony compact cassette 90 minute. There is some Japanese on this case, but I was also able to find some international resources mentioning this. So I'm not sure if this was also bought in Japan. It came out of the same collection as the TDK, so it is possible. 
This was made from 1968 until 1970, and in 1970, Sony introduced the HF name for their Type 1 cassettes. Right here, it says Auto Sensor. What's up with that? Well, let's take a look at the cassette itself. There it is. And there is the leader tape. And as you can see, this has a metal film coating all the way at the end. So you can see, if I try to wind this, yeah, it's all the way at the end, and it only makes contact right along here. Now, this metal tape was for Sony cassette recorders equipped with the auto sensor feature. In record mode, those cassette recorders would output a loud alarm sound through the speaker if the end of the tape was reached. And that was, of course, actuated by this metal film on the leader tape. Clydeside made a video about a Sony cassette recorder equipped with this auto sensor feature. I will put a link to that video into the description. Next, I have a Sony Ferrochrome 90. This cassette is from their second and last series of Type 3 Ferrochrome cassettes that was sold from 1980 until 1984. Now, as you may or may not know, ferric oxide is very good at capturing low frequencies, but not so good at capturing high frequencies. Chromium dioxide is good at capturing high frequencies, but not quite so good at capturing low frequencies. So the idea was, if you combine the two, ferric oxide and chromium dioxide, you could make the perfect tape. And so the ferrochrome tape was born. First, a layer of ferric oxide is deposited onto the tape, and then on top of that, a layer of chromium dioxide is deposited. Now, this idea did not last very long. As you know, the Type 3 cassettes were soon made obsolescent by the Type 4 metal tape cassettes. Now, as you can see on this cassette, we also have a HICOM sticker. What are the odds of this combination, a ferrochrome cassette recorded with HICOM noise reduction? That has got to be very, very rare. Let's take a look at the cassette itself. There it is. It does look quite nice. And last but not least, I have some high-end. This is the TDK MAR90. This is one of TDK's famous Type 4 metal cassettes with a housing based around a metal frame. This whole gray section is cast metal. This cassette is insanely heavy, really, really solid. TDK made these cassettes with metal frame from 1979 until 1989, and this particular version was made from 1982 until 1984. Another special feature that is easily forgotten is this, the resettable, removable record protection tabs. You can just simply take them out to protect the cassette, and when you do want to make a new recording, you can reinstall them like so. This cassette was generously given to me by a friend who might say hello in the comments when he watches this video. And that's it. Thank you for watching.